Hey there, Internet. I'm outside the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and I wanted to talk for just a little bit about the recent controversy uh, surrounding Harry Potter. I've seen a lot of calls online to cancel Harry Potter, cancel J.K. Rowling, um, because of her recent comments sort of against transgenderism and against the trans community. Um, Hey guys, this is Akhil in the edit. As I was putting this video together, I realized that I didn't really give my take on the whole subject. I am against all of these anti-trans statements that JK Rowling has put out. I'm a huge supporter of the LGBT community and of the trans community. I'm not here to defend Rowling, but I see this like many issues that we have in the world, I see this as an issue of ignorance, and I'm hoping that the ignorance that have led to rolling statements um, can be rectified in the future for the safety of the trans community. But just like it's difficult, if not impossible, to separate the author from the story, I think that it's it's almost impossible to separate the story of Harry Potter from the cultural impact that it's had on the world, from the personal impact that it's had on, you know, millions, thousands, if not millions of fans around the globe who've used Harry Potter as a lens to understand themselves, to understand the world around them and the communities in which they live. I wrote a blog post a little bit ago sort of to address the authorship and the story um, and how, you know, trans issues or, or and how Rowling's opinions on trans issues have found their way into the fabric of Harry Potter. I'm not going to advocate for canceling Harry Potter because I think that the good that it's done for the community and for the world far outweighs um, the potential issues that arise from this. Yes, what JK Rowling is promoting is insensitive. Yes, it's damaging and dangerous, but we need to understand everything in context. For my context, I work a lot with children, um, children who are around Hogwarts age, so middle school and high school children. Um, I teach them in religious education classes. Uh, I create curriculum for camps and the camp counselor as well um, for that age range. So I know that that age range of sort of 11 to 18, they say ignorant things, they say mean things, they say damaging things often it happens, but it's not because they're trying to be mean. It's not because they're trying to be damaging. Most of the time, it's simply because they're ill-informed about the issues or they don't understand how their words can impact those around them or even themselves. And I think, in my opinion, Rowling is sort of in the same situation as those kids where she doesn't have all the facts um, and she doesn't understand the nuances of this issue because it's something outside of what she's directly interacted with. And to a certain extent, she, she doesn't understand the impact that these specific words have on the trans community and also on the community at large. Um, her writing has reached millions and millions of people around the world. And for her Twitter account or for her blog on her website, um, which for, for normal people is just, it's a very personal thing. My blog is personal. My Twitter account is my personal opinions. If they had the reach that JK Rowling has, I would probably be canceled too. Um, because I don't know all the nuances of everyone's situation. 
And until I'm educated about it, I can't really, you know, comment on... Until I'm educated, I can't make an informed comment. It's as simple as that. Um, but in my blog post, the conclusion that I came to and what I want to expand on today are two things. The first is the idea that in Harry Potter lore, who you are and who you become is essentially destined from birth. And then the other idea is that the examples that J.K. Rowling presents in the Harry Potter stories of transformation, of transfiguration, of changing one's body, um, she, she portrays transformation in a way that if it's temporary, it's good. But if it's long-term or permanent, then transformation is always a bad thing, at least in her examples. I'll talk more about that later in the video. So in Harry Potter, there's this overarching idea that who you are, who you become, what you're destined for is decided at birth or before birth. There's this whole destiny element to the Harry Potter story. And it's not just the prophecy between Harry and Voldemort. There's a lot of controversy around that prophecy about um, whether it's true or not. The biggest argument that I've seen is that the only reason the prophecy comes true is because Voldemort is an active participant in it. If he had ignored the prophecy, then it wouldn't have come true, but he essentially fulfilled it on purpose. Um, so the, the credence, no pun intended, of prophecies aside, there are other elements in Harry Potter that sort of reflect this. Um, when you are first going to Hogwarts, you are sorted into a house. And that sorting isn't based on who you think you are. It's based on some deeper notion of who you actually are. That's why you have people like Neville, who, when he was sorted, may not have been a Gryffindor, right? Um, in Goblet of Fire, he was more like a Ravenclaw. In Sorcerer's Stone, he was more like a Hufflepuff. Um, it wasn't until the end of his school career that he really filled those Gryffindor shoes. Um, and there, there's also a genetic component to that as well. Weasleys are immediately put into Gryffindor. Ha! Another Weasley. Malfoys are immediately put into Slytherin before the hat even comes on. Slytherin! So the students don't fully, and perhaps rightfully, don't have control over which house they're put into, with the exception of hat stalls. But it, it serves this notion that Rowling is trying to promote that who you are is sort of ingrained inside of you and you don't have the control to change who you are. The same goes for wand woods. You can't, you know, pick up anyone's wand and use it. You won't have the same effects with somebody else's wand as you would with the wand that was, that chose you. You know, the wand chooses the wizard. So the, the personality of the wand is speaking to those same you know, it's speaking to that same notion of self that is out of reach for the normal person. It is curious that you should be destined for this wand when its brother gave you that scar. Um, the same thing goes for Patronuses. People don't have control over the shape that their Patronus will take. They don't have control over the shape of their animagus if they decide to become an animagus. So, so there are all these, these little things that Rowling writes about um, that play into the idea that who you are and who you become is sort of out of your control. And it's almost as if it's assigned at birth. The biggest example probably of your fate being assigned at birth is the idea of magic in general in many fantasies. Magic is something that you can learn, right? You can study magic. In Doctor Strange, for example, 
a non-magical person can learn magic in Dungeons and Dragons, a non-magical person can learn magic. But that's simply not the case in Harry Potter. And I want to bring up the example of Argus Filch and Credence Barebones, um, because those are the examples that Rowling uses to sort of solidify this point. Filch is a squib. He is a non-magical person born into a magical family. And he is, he still gets to participate in the magical world. He still gets to work at Hogwarts, but he is at a massive disadvantage. He is essentially disabled because everyone around him, including the children, including the elves, can use magic and he can't. He's living in a world in which he'll never belong. And if you dig into sort of the history of this, there's been multiple civil rights movements for squibs um, so that they are less of an oppressed class. But the fact that he has magical blood but can never be magical solidifies that point that, you know, it's once you're born, who you are has been decided and there's nothing you can do to change that. The other example is Credence Barebones from the Fantastic Beast series. He's an example of someone who is magical, but he's repressing his magic. He is a magical person whose circumstances don't allow him to be magical. And what happens with that? Because he was assigned magic at birth, he can never not be magical. So if he's not living a life that's magical, he explodes. Spoilers for Fantastic Beasts if you haven't seen it, but... Young wizards and witches sometimes try to suppress their magic to avoid persecution. They develop what was called an obscurus. If you're born magical, you can never become non-magical. The magic will destroy you. This idea that there's no permeation between magic and non-magic solidifies this idea that who you are is assigned at birth. And like I said, this is something that's reflected in J.K. Rowling's blog as well. She talks about the same thing, how um, gender is something that is assigned at birth and that um, in, in her experience and the conversations that she's had, that's not something that can change. Um, and the people that she mentions in the, in the blog post who have changed, that she's talked to, um, more often than not, want to change back. If I remember correctly, those are the only people that she's talked to or made reference to in her blog are the people who have regretted transitions or detransitioned, which I don't know if her bias is informing the information that she gets or if the information that she gets is informing her bias. Um, but it, it just solidifies the idea that the only good transformation is a temporary transformation. Which brings me to the next point that I've made in the blog and I'm elaborating on here is while transformation and transfiguration are hugely important to the Harry Potter story, there's this idea that the only good transformation is a temporary transformation. And that's not something that's outright stated in the Harry Potter story, but it's something that you can look at the examples of transformation that Rowling uses. So the first example that comes to mind is Nymphadora Tonks. Don't call me Nymphadora. She is a metamorph magus, meaning that she can transform parts of her body. She, you know, changes aspects of her face for a few seconds as a goof. She changes the color of her hair, which is, you know, it's the same as changing the color of your clothes. Essentially, it's not a meaningful transformation. Another example is the Animagi who transform into animals. Sirius transforms into a dog to sneak around, right? What's life without a little risk? All of the Marauders transformed into animals once a month while they were in school. Um, just for a night. But then when we get to the long-term transformation, which is Peter Pettigrew, Peter Pettigrew was a rat for 12 years. 12 years! Curiously long life for a common garden rat. The reason that he transformed for such a long time was 
so that he could escape prosecution, so that he could return to Lord Voldemort, so that essentially he could be evil. His transformation, his long-term transformation was used for evil. Um, another example that we have is the polyjuice potion. You can use polyjuice potion for an hour, I think up to, up to 20 hours, I think is the upper limit of polyjuice potion. Um, so in Chamber of Secrets, when they use Polyjuice Potion to gain information, it's for about half an hour. For the Battle of the Seven Potters, they use Polyjuice Potion for about an hour for their own safety. It's all short-term transformations. But then you look at the long-term transformation using Polyjuice Potion, you look at... Barty Crouch Jr. Barty Crouch Jr. and Mama Crouch used Polyjuice Potion for years so that Barty Crouch Jr. could escape from Azkaban. He continued to use Polyjuice Potion for months so that he can impersonate a professor and try to kill one of his students and bring the Dark Lord back and start another war. So even with Polyjuice Potion, you see this idea that a short-term transformation is good, but a long-term transformation is only used for bad. But Unlike the prophecies and the sorting and the other notions of self that J.K. Rowling has, the idea of transformation is something that the community can fix, essentially. Um, because this idea of, of long-term transformations are evil and good transformations are short-term is only through the examples that Rowling uses. It's not through the laws that she's created is not through the world that she created. So if you are contributing to the Harry Potter community, if you are creating OCs, if you are uh, writing fictions, this is a perception that you can change. You can create an example of a long-term transformation being used for good. You can bring credence to the idea of transformation in the Harry Potter universe that the the lore is open enough that that's a possibility. So you don't need to cancel Harry Potter, especially if it's something that's been impactful for your own growth and your own development. But if you understand where Harry Potter as a story stands in this, in this world in which we live, then you can figure out your place within the story as well. So those are my thoughts on the J.K. Rowling whole issue. Um, if you're still on the cancel train and you want to cancel Harry Potter and you want to cancel J.K. Rowling, first of all, thank you for making it all the way through this video. Um, I, I understand where you're coming from because she has been so influential on our lives growing up. It's it's hard and it's scary to have to lose, lose that through no fault of our own. I think, it's, I think it's incredibly important to, when we're discussing these things, consider the context and consider the topics that are actually presented. Um, so that's, that's just my understanding of it. If you have other opinions, please leave them in the comments. But personally, I'm not canceling Harry Potter but I am doing what I can to inform myself of the world in which I live, inform myself of the context that I live in, and then try to make the best decisions moving forward. I can't undo the impact that Harry Potter has had on my life and the lives of my friends and family, but by keeping myself informed, trying to be as empathetic as I can be, um, I'm hoping that I can move forward in, in this, this world that we live in. So thank you for listening to this whole rant. Um, I know it's, it's not as engaging as, it's not as fun as my other content, but thank you for sticking with me and I will see you guys in the next video.